For decades, astronomers believed the early universe was a chaotic scatter of nascent galaxies, drifting without order. But as it turns out, that picture has just been shattered. The James Webb Space Telescope has unveiled the largest structure ever found in the universe, a cosmic vine of 20 galaxies stretching a staggering 13 million light-years across, emerging when the cosmos was only a fraction of its current age. This isn't just another record-breaking discovery, it's a revelation that challenges everything we thought we knew about how cosmic structures form. If our models can't account for this scale and age, what else are we missing? And just how much deeper does this mystery go? The cosmic vine stretches across space like a colossal thread, linking 20 galaxies in a chain that spans 13 million light years from end to end. To grasp its true scale, consider that our own Milky Way is about 100,000 light years weighed a single city block compared to the vine's sprawling metropolitan reach. This structure is more than 100 times longer than our entire galaxy, and even its width, at 650,000 light-years, dwarfs the span of the Milky Way. Within this immense corridor, each galaxy is a distinct island, yet together they form a continuous, interconnected system an architecture that defies the scattered, isolated picture long assumed for the early universe. At the heart of the vine, astronomers have identified six dense knots, over-densities, where galaxies cluster more tightly, connected by filaments that trace the underlying framework of dark matter. These filaments act as the cosmic highways along which matter has gathered for billions of years. The Vine's 20-member galaxies are not randomly distributed. Their positions and velocities reveal a coherent structure, each galaxy sharing a similar redshift, meaning the light we see from them began its journey over 11 billion years ago. The total length of the Vine, measured at just over 13 million light-years, is not just a record for its era. It is a scale that challenges our intuition. If the Milky Way were the size of a quarter, the vine would stretch farther than the distance from New York to Los Angeles. Its width, at 650,000 light-years, is six times the diameter of our galaxy, forming a ribbon of matter thick enough to host entire groups of galaxies side by side. Within the vine, the galaxies themselves vary in mass and type, but two stand out for their sheer size. These giants, each containing nearly 10 billion solar masses in stars, have already ceased forming new stars, a state known as quiescence. Their presence signals that even in the universe's youth, some galaxies had already lived through cycles of growth and exhaustion, settling into maturity while their neighbors continued to blaze with new star formation. The vine's dimensions and population offer a window into cosmic architecture on a scale rarely glimpsed at this epoch. Instead of isolated galaxies adrift in darkness, the early universe reveals itself as a landscape of structure, cities of stars connected by luminous bridges, all woven into a tapestry that stretches far beyond the reach of any single galaxy. This is not a loose gathering, but a formation with boundaries and coherence, a signpost of cosmic order emerging when the universe was still in its adolescence. Light from the cosmic vine began its journey when the universe was just under two billion years old, an era when cosmic structures were expected to be small, scattered, and only loosely bound. The galaxies within the vine all share a redshift of 3.44, a precise fingerprint that places them at this early stage. According to standard cosmological models, such as lambda cold dark matter, the assembly of a structure spanning 13 million light years at this epoch should be exceedingly rare. Theories predict that by this time, 
the universe had only completed a fraction of the growth needed to build massive clusters. Most simulations suggest that protoclusters at redshift 3.4 would be in the earliest phases of gathering their mass, with only a few percent of their final galaxies in place and the majority still scattered across the surrounding cosmic web. Press Schechter formalism and its modern extensions estimate that forming a halo with a total mass above 10 trillion solar masses at this redshift lies at the very edge of what is statistically probable, a 3 to 4 sigma event, where the odds favor much smaller, less developed associations. The Vine's member galaxies, strung together in a coherent chain, represent a level of organization that pushes against these theoretical boundaries. Most models anticipate that these early structures would be diffuse, with galaxies still falling inward along filaments, not yet locked into the dense knots seen here. The predicted number density for such massive protoclusters at Z equals 3.44 is vanishingly low, on the order of 1 per million cubic megaparsecs. Yet the vine exists, its galaxies already showing signs of environmental influence. Two of its giants have already quenched their star formation, a process that, in standard timelines, should not occur until much later, after the cluster has grown denser and more massive. The presence of these mature, inactive galaxies at this stage suggests that some regions of the universe assembled their mass and evolved their populations much faster than average. The cosmic vine's existence does not break the backbone of cosmological theory, but it does probe the rarest outcomes, those that simulations predict should be possible, but only just. Its dimensions, mass, and the presence of both active and quenched galaxies reveal a universe capable of building complex structures earlier and more efficiently than once thought. The vine stands as a living record of cosmic adolescence, a time when the rules of assembly were not uniform but shaped by local peaks in the primordial density field, where gravity could work faster and galaxies could mature ahead of schedule. This structure forces astronomers to reconsider the speed at which order emerged from chaos and to question how many other such early giants might still be hidden in the depths of the cosmic web. Jade's GSZ-14-0 stands as a striking outlier in the early universe. Its light began its journey just 300 million years after the Big Bang, at a time when most galaxies were expected to be small, dim, and still assembling. Instead, this galaxy already shines with the luminosity of systems billions of years older. Careful modeling places its stellar mass at about 400 to 500 million times that of the Sun, far less than the Milky Way today, but astonishing for such a young epoch. Its star formation rate is measured at roughly 45 solar masses each year, a pace that would double its stellar content in just a few million years. Even with generous uncertainties, the galaxy's mass is at least an order of magnitude above what most simulations predict for this era. The challenge lies not only in its size, but in its efficiency. To reach this mass so quickly, Jade's GSZ-14-0 must have converted its available gas into stars at rates far beyond standard models. Theoretical frameworks, even those allowing for optimistic star formation, struggle to explain how so much mass could gather and ignite in such a short span of cosmic history. If the initial mass function in this galaxy favored heavier, short-lived stars, as some models suggest, the true stellar mass could be lower. But this would only deepen the mystery of its brightness and rapid growth. These findings force a reconsideration of the timeline for galactic assembly. Instead of slow, steady growth, some galaxies appear to leap ahead, reaching maturity in cosmic instants. Jade's GSZ-14-0 is not alone. It is part of a growing census of massive, luminous galaxies 
detected within the universe's first few hundred million years. Each one stretches the boundary of what was thought possible, hinting that the earliest epochs were far more dynamic and efficient than anyone anticipated. The presence of such a galaxy at this redshift does not just tweak current models, it compels astronomers to ask whether the basic ingredients and rules for building galaxies in the early universe need to be rewritten. A 2744 QSO-1 sits over 13 billion light years away. It's light a messenger from a universe just 700 million years old. The discovery came through a rare alignment. Three distinct images of the same object, each magnified by the gravity of a massive foreground cluster. At the heart of this distant galaxy, astronomers measured a black hole weighing in at 40 million times the mass of the Sun. This figure was not plucked from theory, but drawn directly from the broad Antr H beta emission line, whose width revealed gas clouds orbiting at nearly 3,000 kilometers per second. The measurement, made possible by the James Webb Space Telescope's deep NIR spec spectra, left little room for doubt. The host galaxy, by contrast, is a faint shadow, so compact that even Webb's sharp vision cannot separate its starlight from the glare of the accreting black hole. Estimates place the galaxy's total mass at no more than one to two billion solar masses, meaning the black hole accounts for at least 3% of its host's mass and potentially much more. In the local universe, Supermassive black holes typically make up just a fraction of a percent of their galaxies. Here, the ratio is tenfold higher, perhaps even approaching parity. The black hole is not a passenger, it is a dominant force, shaping the fate of its environment from the very start. The presence of such a massive black hole at this early epoch presses against the boundaries of current theory. Standard models require hundreds of millions of years for a stellar mass seed to grow this large, even under ideal conditions. Yet a 2744 QSO-1 is already in place, accreting material at 30% of the Eddington limit in a galaxy that itself is still assembling. This system forces astronomers to reconsider how, how quickly black holes can form and how they interact with their hosts. The rules that govern the growth of cosmic giants may be far more flexible and far less forgiving than anyone imagined. The Paradox of a 2744 QSO-1 is not just its size, but its timing, its dominance, and the silent question it poses about the engines that shaped the first galaxies. The cosmic vine, stretching 13 million light years and linking 20 galaxies, stands as the largest structure ever discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope. Detected at a redshift of 3.44, it existed when the universe was just 2 billion years old, far earlier than models predicted for such a vast protocluster. Alongside this, Webb identified Jade's GS's 14.0 a Milky Way-sized galaxy formed only 300 million years after the Big Bang, and A, 2744 QSO-1, a supermassive black hole ten times larger than expected for its era. These findings, drawn from peer-reviewed data and released observation logs, reveal structures that current cosmological models cannot fully explain. Yet many questions remain. How did such immense formations arise so quickly? What mechanisms fueled this rapid growth? As the Webb Telescope continues its survey, every new image challenges our understanding of the early universe. The evidence is clear. Our cosmic history is far more complex and dynamic than previous generations believed.